Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on calculating the effect size after ANOVA in Excel. As always, if you find this video to be helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I certainly appreciate it. I have here in this worksheet fictitious data that I'll be using for this example. And these data and this format, all these calculations, were from a video I did before on calculating ANOVA step by step. I'll be going through these calculations more quickly in this video and getting to how to calculate eta squared. And before I do that, I'm going to use the data analysis tool pack to conduct ANOVA and show you how to calculate eta squared from that perspective. So we have here these fictitious data and we're thinking about this in terms of one dependent variable. So all these scores are from the same measure. Let's say it's a measure of severity, symptoms. And then we have an independent variable named symptoms and it has three levels, substance use, depression, and trauma. So participants, this example would be in one of these groups and each one of these scores would represent one time when the psychometric instrument was given to a participant. So each of these scores are from different participants and no participant would be in more than one group. So it's not unusual after gathering data in this format, this type of study, to conduct an ANOVA in this case because we have three levels of one independent variable. So we had two levels of one independent variable. We could use a t-test. We could also use ANOVA, but we could also use a t-test and that would be a more common statistic to perform. But here, because we have three levels, we're going to perform one-way ANOVA. And the result of one-way ANOVA would be a probability value. And that would tell us if there's a statistically significant difference between these levels. Now that's an important outcome of ANOVA. We want to test the null hypothesis that there's no difference between the groups. But that's only the first part after ANOVA. You also want to calculate the effect size. So say that we perform ANOVA here with these data and we get a statistically significant result. And in this case, we do. That tells us whether or not we can reject the null hypothesis, but it doesn't tell us how important the difference is. To find that part out, we need to calculate effect size. And in this case, after ANOVA, I'm going to be calculating eta squared. That's a fairly common statistic to calculate after ANOVA. Looking at a t-test, which again would be with two levels, it's fairly common to calculate Cohen's d. Now, eta squared and Cohen's d are both measures of effect size, but they measure effect size differently. So again, here we'll be looking at eta squared. So using the data analysis tool pack, I'll perform an ANOVA with these data. So I'm going to go to the Data tab up top in the ribbon, over to Data Analysis, and then ANOVA Single Factor from this list box. Click OK. And it's going to ask us for an input range. I'm going to select B1 all the way down through D16. So all the labels of the levels and all the scores. So these are grouped by columns. The labels are in the first row, so I'll check that off. I'm going to leave the alpha at the default of 5%. That's fairly common in the social sciences. Then under output options, I'll go to output range. And for this, I'm going to select a column here to the right. I'll select column P and row two. And I click OK. And you can see we have here the output from the data analysis tools for NOVA. And of interest here for effect size would be this sum of squares statistic. We have the between groups and within groups and then the total. And notice it matches what I have over here from the step-by-step -step calculation. So when looking at eta squared, that measure of effect size, the calculation is the sum of squares between groups divided by the sum of squares total. So this will be equal sign, sum of squares between, or treatment, divided by 
sum of squares total. So we have here 0.23, or 23%. And this is the percent of the variance in the dependent variable that can be explained by the independent variable. That's what eta squared tells us. Again, this is different than Cohen's D. It's also worth noting here that for a one-way ANOVA, the value of eta squared and the value of partial eta squared are the same. There's no difference between those values. Partial eta squared becomes a different value when you have more than one factor. It's used for two-way ANOVA, three-way ANOVA, and so on. Eta squared is used for one-way ANOVA. So moving back to the right, where we have the fictitious data and these calculations. Here, of course, we would calculate eta squared the same way. It would be sum of squares between, so this would be equal sign, sum of squares between divided by sum of squares total. Of course, it gives us the same 23%. But how did we get these values, sum of squares between, sum of squares total? Well, we can think of this in terms of a few different steps. And again, I'm not going to go through every calculation here, as I've covered this before in another video. But I'll go through this quickly to give you an understanding of where these values come from. So if you think about these columns, I have them grouped by level of the independent variable symptoms. And you have here each score minus the mean, these values, and then the score minus the mean squared. And down here you have the sum of squares for this level. So the sum of all these squared differences. Same thing for the depression level, same thing here for the trauma level. So we have these three values, 896, 2844, and 504. If we look here at the sum of squares within in cell N3, we can see that's the sum of those three values. That gives us the sum of squares within. The sum of squares total is calculated by taking all the scores together, taking the score minus the mean, and taking the square of that, and then summing the squares. That gives us 5534. So once we have the sum of squares within and the sum of squares total, we can calculate the sum of squares between. It's the total minus the within. And that gives us this 1290 value. Below this eta squared value, I have this small table with small, medium, and large effect size guidelines. And again, these are specific to eta squared. And you can see the small effect size, 0 0.01, and that would be up to the medium value, 0 0.059. Medium would be 0 0.059 to 0.138, and large would be greater than 0.138. So in this case, with an eta squared of 0.23, this would be a large effect size. I hope you found this video on calculating effect size after ANOVA and Excel to be helpful. Thanks for watching.